Hello Sagittarius friends, I'm Annie Botticelli and welcome to my Sagittarius April 2023 astrology horoscope forecast. This is for you if Sagittarius is your sun sign, your moon sign, your rising sign, or any other placement of Sagittarius that you're listening for. What I'm going to talk about here is part of your astrological picture. And if you're a very late degree Sag friend, like I am, a sun sign late Sag, then I suggest you additionally listen to my Capricorn report. So late Sages, very late Sages we're talking about here, we'll say about 23 degrees through the rest of the sign, or birthdays around December 15th or so through the rest of the sign. Listen to both the Sagittarius and Capricorn reports, since there will be information in both reports for you. So what is going on this month? Oh my gosh, there is so much to talk about and so much I'm excited about for Sagittarius. So I'm just going to go in order. I'm going to give you a quick list of what we're going to um, get into, and then we'll break it down. We have a continuation of that fire dragon energy that I talked about in March, where all of these Aries energies are making the most fabulous aspect in all of astrology for Sagittarius's. Sagis have been getting dogged with this Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle. It has not been fun for us since the end of 2021 with that cycle. And now... We're having a little bubbling up of um, got, you know, getting air and getting refreshed and getting inspired. And it's, there's so much to celebrate here, including this awesome new cycle of initiation that is beginning with the new Aries Libra eclipse cycle. Okay, so we've got an Aries black moon solar eclipse this month. And this begins a cycle starting now that goes through 2025 of powerful and positive, in many cases, especially for Sag, changes that will be very, very radical um, and very, very, very vibrant. You know, this fire energy is the best for us. We love it. It lights up everything that uh, makes sense to us. And uh, so that's very exciting. So we'll get into that. I'll tell you um, what types of changes you can expect. And um, then we also have a strange month in the way that it's broken up into two completely different energies. First week of the month through April 7th, we're still in that brilliant open window with direct stars, no personal planet retrogrades, where everything is saying, go do now, plan, get it all done, make the commitments, do everything you got to do. Then from April 7th to April 21st, Mercury starts to slide into its retrograde that lasts from April 21st through May 15th. And then from May 15th through the 30th, when it's moving direct, but still gaining speed, it gets a little groggy. So, you know, that's our full Mercury retrograde cycle. But not too long after that, we start to go into Venus retrograde shadow period. We only have a Venus retrograde around every 18 months. So it's been a while. Um, and then after that cycle, we're also going, or in between that cycle, we're also going to have another Mercury retrograde cycle. So after April 7th, we're diving down into the inward backward motions of the retrograde planets, which is very different than this crazy open period through April 7th. So we'll go into more details about that. And we'll also talk about the Taurus energies because we have quite a bit of that energy this month. And we'll talk about what that means for Sagis. All right. So let's just break it to, oh, and then I'll also give you some dates to note. Okay, so let's get down into the nitty gritty and just start with this awesome fire frenzy that's continued from March. We have the sun, Chiron, Jupiter, star goddesses, Astraea, Vesta, and Eris, and Mercury for a little while longer, all in Aries, and also the new moon, black moon, solar eclipse in Aries. Okay, all of that in Aries. And we already talked about how there's a 120 degree angle. Basically, 120 degrees is the angle of coherence and awesome ease and grace and blessings. Things that you might not even have to do anything for, but if you did anything in the past, that could show up in big ways. So anytime any planets move through Aries or Leo for Sages, that makes that angle. So this period of time when all the Aries placements are happening, and then we have extra ones because we have two outer planets in Aries. Um, well, we also have Eris there, but she's going to be there forever, so I'm not counting her. But, um, I mean, she takes like 500 and something years to move around her orbit, so she'll be in Aries a while as well. But in any case, this is really great news for us because we get enlivened. We get zesty self-empowerment. You know, we get revitalized clarity of purpose and our image. We get positive physical changes, vibrant health opportunities, amazing chances to 
do things we've always wanted to do. This is bucket list energy for sure, um, because it's manifesting through the fifth house for us. So we've got the Aries energies, which you know relate to the physical body and the vibrance and the starting new things and the impetus and the motivation and the inspiration that will definitely abound at this time. And for the first week or so of the month, we're still like inspired doing these new things. And then as the month progresses, we get inspired to clear up some old things and we may find that some of the eclipse energy may have to do with some things that we started doing before. Now, pay special attention to that energy, the end of 2013 through early 2016 and early 2004 to early 2006, because those are the times previously, most recently, that we had the Aries Libra eclipse cycle. So if you look back to that time, you might find like, whoa, you had a lot of changes to your me, we sector at that time. What I call the me, we sector is us and other people, you know, things being shuffled around, um, big endings, big beginnings, the starts of major, major new relationships that we might be going to deeper levels of now, um, even after all this time. And so the combination of the retrograde with the eclipse cycle returning could bring some things back from the past and especially look to those periods of time that might want to either come back up for focus or that you have been doing and wants a different level of attention or commitment. So the eclipse is on April 19th or 20th, depending on your time zone. Um, But of course, the eclipse season gets really hot four to six weeks or so before the actual eclipse and lasts after. So we're talking, you know, early March, even the end of February, we might have started feeling these eclipses and started to see where they might be directing us. And then we do have a continuation of the Taurus Scorpio eclipse cycle, May 5th. We have a 14 degree Scorpio lunar eclipse. I'll talk about that more in the May report, but just want to let you know, we are under the domain of that, you know, the heat of that eclipse season as well here in April. So big changes to the me, we, um, storylines, but also having to do with your stuff versus other people's stuff, your money versus family money, government taxes, debt, those kind of things are very vibrantly put in your face to be dealt with. And often remember a couple of things to remember about eclipses. The things that happen from eclipses are often non-negotiable. We often don't really have that much say in what's going on during an eclipse. It's like, wow, okay, this is happening and this is what we're doing. And we might have some decisions to make like how it may look or some smaller details about it, but these are generally non-negotiable changes. The other thing to know about this time is that this is a karmic cycle at play, all right? And it also has to do with our highest expression this lifetime. So the North Node and the South Node in the chart relates to our highest expression this lifetime and our karma, basically our karma and our dharma, what we came here to do and what's stopping us from doing it and what's helping us to do it. And so when we have the eclipses, they happen, the eclipses happen on the ecliptic and the ecliptic relates to the nodes. And so this is very, very major movement along the karmic front where we burn up negative karma. We may be able to take advantage of positive karma and we are in a process of creating, um, you know, new experiences as other ones close out. So there is this strong energy of fate that is um, associated with whatever is going to go on now. And so in many cases, we can just kind of decide how we're going to see things um, and not necessarily what may happen. But do know that regardless of what happens, you are going to be freed from a lot of things. And some of the things you might not not want to be freed from, um, but some of the things even if you were reluctant at first, may turn out to be one of the best things that ever happened to you which because they can open you up. So much energy is going to be opened up in your field. And we know, like, if you have an empty space on a shelf or, you know, an empty space in a room, it wants to fill, you know? It's like it's cr- taking something away creates this vacuum that sucks things in its, into its place. So anything that's removed from your life energetically and the degree to which it is, you know, a big thing or not 
is the degree to which new things are going to rush in in its place. And sometimes that's staggered. Sometimes the new things come in first and then the other things leave. Sometimes the things leave and there's a little lag time and you're like, where's the stuff to fill in the space? But it will fill in. So that's what we're working with here. Now, everyone in the zodiac is going to feel this eclipse. All fire signs get to get extra blessings from this eclipse. But those of you who are close to 29 degrees, so those are very late degree friends, will say 24 degree saggies and through the rest of the sign. So the like birthday is around December 15th or so through the rest of the sign. Uh, and the closer to like those last days of Sag. Um, so, you know, 19th, 20th, 21st, 22nd. Um, we get the greatest kiss from that, um, that eclipse. Okay. So I'm in there. My son's at 24 degrees. So I'm in there with you all. Um, but if you're not in that spectrum, don't worry. There's plenty of awesomeness as you've heard me talk about. Okay. Now, while I could talk about the <laughs> series blended forever, I just want to point out a couple more things having to do with the house that they're moving through, which is the house of Leo. This is our vibrant creative expression. This is things involving birthing things, like whether it's a child, so everything from romance to connecting with someone romantically to conception of a child to the birth of a child to the child rearing, the whole process of anything having to do with children is here. So, you know, your child sector is really lit up. If you're not trying to have children, look out <laughs> because you'll be extra fertile. If you are, that you may get great news. If you already have children or other people's kids are in your life in a wonderful way, you may find there are amazing opportunities to connect with children in wonderful ways. And for some people, their creative projects are their babies, your creative babies. So uh, the same thing, the inse- like the inception of an idea or the conception, the conception of an idea to the work that it takes to manifest that idea and the birthing of a project. All of those are, you know, in this uh, Leo sector. So as these Aries placements move along, they're activating your creativity and, um, you know, and really just helping you to find more of that zest and fire and um, inspiration in your life and motivation. You know, this is a time, this could be very reckless and impulsive because the Aries energies, but at least since they're in a nice angle for you, hopefully that will be smooth. But just be aware to watch out for overdoing and excess because, yeah, you know, that's pretty likely. The Leo energies also have to do with romance, your romantic partner in your true love, okay? So having an eclipse cycle in the center section of your true love, if you don't have your true love, can help to bring them in. If they are here, it can help you move along in positive ways along the relationship um, journey. So um, yeah, anything having to do with that is lit up and you kind of being out in front of people. If you're a singer or a, you know, a diva, fashionista, if you're an athlete, if you're an artist or a musician, actor, something that puts you out in front of people or your work out in front of people, there are so many chances to smile huge at this time. Okay, so let's talk about the Taurus energies. Um, these are very fun also in the way that they can help to balance out some of the excess madness that will be going on from the positive things. You know, we can get a little bit spun out when we have the planets on our side too much as we kind of have right now. And those Taurus energies can help us ground in the opportunities. They can also help us to be discerning about which opportunities to take, to put, to invest in, you know? So March and April, um, early part of April especially, is very much about trying things on, you know, experimenting, giving things a go. Um, And then as the Taurus energies progress, it's really helping us to discern and pick which of all the options we really want to invest in. So you'll notice that's going on and you'll have some good energy to kind of hone in and discern um, what's going to get your attention of all of the the things that could. And this is also flooding your house of health and wellness. So you might be ready to take some necessary steps for your vibrant health. You know, I always talk about how Sagittarius rules the hips and the liver. Um, So... You can have other things that go on with your body, right? Of course, but you might need some extra special attention or have some extra resources to devote to healing your hips, um, strengthening them, 
or something having to do with learning about liver mutations. You're going to hear me talk about this a lot over time because it's been so helpful for me and my health journey. Um, And I think that many of you are probably walking around with some genetic liver mutations that could be creating some health problems for you that are enigmatic or doctors don't know what the heck to do with you because it's so enigmatic. And you might find some um, information and the ability to heal through understanding uh, your genetic uh, coding, basically. So there are opportunities for that abounding now as well. So as Mars moves finally out of Gemini, you know, this just recently happened. This is very, very, very helpful for us because we've spent from August of 2022 through March of 2023 with Mars not only in Gemini, which spins us out because it's a fellow mutable energy and it opposes our sign, um, you know, but also caused us to not to be indecisive about things. Um, And now that it's getting out of there, we might find that more clarity about things we were bouncing back and forth or doing half-heartedly, that clarity might start to come in. And just by stopping the opposition, this long-term opposition, it can definitely give us a lot of relief from being overwhelmed and spinning out all over the place. Because I know for myself, from August through now as I'm recording this, um, which is still in the zone, I'm recording this in February, you know, that opposing Mars thing is like, it's a lot. It's making a lot of us drive all over the place, having a massive amount of communication with people. It's just very dizzying. And so I think that we might, you know, notice when it changes, it it could just help us to be a little bit more centered. Now, where it's going is cancer. Um, That's a focus on home and family. We might have some obsessive energies there, you know, into home, housing, real estate. Um, And it's also aspecting the eighth house, which is other people's money and shared resources. So if you have, you know, marital money or resources, family money or resources, inheritances, taxes, um, debt, loans, those kind of things um, will probably get some extra attention at this time. So I have given you some things, there's some ways that the Aries eclipse may manifest. But if you want even more information, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. Oh, wait, no, wait. I do want you to go to that website, but that's not the one I want to talk about now. Go to my YouTube homepage, Annie Botticelli YouTube homepage. Scroll down to the bottom, find the eclipse series. And watch the eclipses in Aries video, because that will give you information about other ways I've seen these eclipses, you know, in Aries manifest. Um, You could get a sneak peek and look at the eclipses in uh, Scorpio, because, you know, we will be in, in the effect of that eclipse as well. And then also look at the eclipses in Leo. Uh, video because, or it says Leo or the fifth house, because that's the house that Sagis are having this in. And all early, middle, and late degree friends are all going to have this in the fifth house. Because since it's a late degree, even in the Placidus chart, that late degree is going to um, click back and stay in the fifth house. Okay. So all Sag placements, watch the eclipses in Leo or fifth house um, to see more ways that the eclipse cycle can manifest for you. Okay, so now we're going to talk about some dates to note. I'm just going to blow through my little calendar list here. Now, the dates I'm going to give you are just a few of the compilation that I create for the people on my newsletter list, right? So if you like to know aspects of note and how you might see them manifest, as well as the general energy of the month and important things to know in writing, delivered to your inbox one month early, definitely want to sign up for my free email newsletter at AnnieHelpsYou.com because that's one of the perks you get from being in my community. All right, so I'll give you a few. And also, that window that I talked about of, um, you know, the direct stars closing out and the retrograde stars starting, if you want a complete 2023 calendar of that flow with the shadow periods and what's good to do when for the whole rest of the year, join my exclusive content portal at AnnieBAstrology.com. Annie, the letter B, astrology.com. Okay, so here we go. April 3rd, we've got Mercury, square Pluto. Squares are difficult aspects. And so in the days around the beginning of the month, 
you might see some power struggles or somebody, you know, some news that comes in that's very transformational um, that, that can apply some pressure, right? So there's a little bit of a tense point there. The days around April 5th, we've got the full moon in Libra. So this is um, fullness, completion, fruition, drama, for better or worse, in the relationship sector. And for um, for Sagi, so for everyone, it's in Libra. So everyone in the Zodiac may see relationship um, news come in from that full moon. For Sagis, this is in your 11th house of acquaintances and friendships and you know, teams and social circles. So you might, you know, you're net and networking. So the news or information or experiences may extend out to the, you know, your friendships and other groups. April 7th ends the open window where we start the slide into retrograde. April 11th, we've got the sun and Jupiter conjunct. Oh, wait, before, before I leave the moon in Libra, because that full moon is at a nice at- angle for Sagas. We get extra blessings from that. And the closer you are to 16 degrees, the more you get a kiss from that full moon in the days around April 5th. So we'll say 11 degrees. I like to use a five degree orb. 11 degrees through 21 degrees, 16 degrees being the biggest kiss. But anyone in that range, you know, really having some extra nice effects. So that's going to be like December 1st through December 11th and the closer to around December 6th the more you get the kiss. Okay, so then on April 11th, or the days around there, the sun gets together with Jupiter in Aries. Okay, so this, we already talked about all this Aries energy, but the, you know Jupiter is called the, the great benefic. It's the bringer of luck and expansion and growth. And although it can cause ruckuses and the sun being conjunct, that can amplify that. Um, since this is shining so brightly for Sag, I'm hoping that goes well. And you have some extra luck happen around that time. Again, everyone gets the kiss. No one's being left out of it, but anyone around 21 degrees, so we'll say 16 degrees through 26 degrees, the closer to 21 degrees, the bigger kiss you get from that amazing aspect. And so that's going to be December 6th through December 16th, and the closer to around December 11th, the more you get that kiss. April 19th or 20th, the new moon, black moon, solar eclipse in Aries. Uh, I don't remember if I mentioned what a black moon is. A black moon is... When there's a second new moon, either in a calendar month or a zodiac sign. So it does have extra power. And, and there are a lot of things having extra power about this eclipse. You know, it's the fact that it's a black moon. There's the fact that it's at 29 degrees. That's the pinnacle of the energy. It's the last degree before it turns into the next sign. And of course, it's the first in an eclipse cycle. So triple power there. Mercury retrograde officially starts April 21st, goes through May 15th. Then the post-shadow transit period ends on May 30th. That's when, you know, things clear up. Then we have a little thing to watch out for here. April 27th, Mars and Cancer, square in Chiron and Aries. Family relationship things could um, have a little bump, you know. There could be a little disturbance or someone in the family could say something that's harsh or hurt your feelings. But all of that can change because as the energy moves on on the 29th Mars and Cancer then makes a nice aspect with the planet Uranus so a sweet surprise can come from that if you resonate with how I teach and you want to learn astrology go to loomlife.com l-u-m-e life.com I have an astrology basics course where you could just get started with the basics or you can enroll in my becoming a professional astrologer mastery course Even if you're not interested in doing astrology professionally and just want to help yourself and your friends and family, I can teach you how to do that. And if you do want to do it professionally, you can take advantage of the fact that I have been a successful entrepreneur for 25 years and I've been a successful online entrepreneur for 17 years. So long before, like everybody's doing certain things now. I've been doing them for a lot longer. (laughs) So definitely I have a lot to offer and to help you to understand, um, how to make your business a success and earn money from your love of the stars. So if you think I put a lot of work and love and heart into what I create for you with all of my free goodies, then you should see what I put into that paid course. So you can see that, um, the whole school at loomlife.com, L-U-M-E life.com. I also have some free courses there, including a free course on um, unleashing your money magnet. So if you're having some financial struggles, I'll teach you some tricks and tips to being a money manifester. 
If you want to see all the free goodies I make for you each month and or sign up for my free email newsletter, go to AnnieHelpsYou.com. I hope you have a wonderful month and I'll see you next month. Bye.